Hello everyone, welcome to my next free tutorial Friday. Um, this time we're going to take a little break from the traditional media and jump back into digital. And it's actually going to be in support of doing some traditional media. I recorded this about a week ago or so while working on my how to draw book. And it's a, uh, basically it's going to be blocking out a cityscape as an underlay um, to do drawings on top of to get your perspective grid and a bunch of shapes actually. And I'm working in Modo. So all I've done so far is I've just created a flat plane um, and that's it. And I'm looking at it in top view. I've gone into the layout tab and I am picking through a bunch of parts. You can see. And these are actually all parts that are part of the uh, X polygon kit that you can buy. Um, I bought that kit and I'm just going to show you how you can block out scenes with it and then you draw back over the top. I won't be drawing in this tutorial. Um, it's going to be just blocking out the cityscape. Uh, and the reason I recorded it, again, was for the uh, How to Draw book to create those things. Also to talk, talk about lens lengths and setting up cameras and that sort of thing. Um, but since I had it and I'm short on time, this is what we're doing this week. So um, all digital. So what I did there is I just went in in the Layout tab and I double clicked on a lot of parts that I saw. And you see them all on the right there. And now I've grabbed them all at the same time and the items you can see I grabbed all of them and I've just distorted them. So I just changed their scale and now I'm pulling them uh, and moving them. So I'm selecting and moving them around. And so basically I'm just going to create a city block. And uh, all this speed is uh, double time. For my free tutorial Friday ones, I, you know, I need to speed them up uh, to get them out the door quickly um, since I'm not uh, obviously getting paid to do these. So, um, but hopefully you can still follow all the steps, which I think they're pretty straightforward steps and I'll you know of course tell you what I'm doing whenever I can so all I'm doing here is scaling the building so I'm just using these basic forms out of that X polygon kit of, of meshes and I'm scaling them around and all I'm looking for is just a variety and so you can see I'm using the uh, handles to change scale but I'm also just typing numbers if I want to make a huge skyscraper or something right I made that 4500% uh, taller in the Y axis. And um, so first is just to get uh, kind of like a skyline in a way. And you'll see I'm just working in a side view here, my left side view of those building forms. And what we're going to do is we're going to arrange these um, in kind of a loose city block kind of way. And we're just going to make this random sci-fi cityscape. And um, then we're going to take that and we're going to replicate it all over that ground plane, which is just a, you know, it's just a plane. I think it's, I can't remember, I made it like four kilometers or something, um, a big square. And you can see now I'm just going to grab them and start to move them around. So uh, in our How to Draw book, this is actually now, and especially now with uh, 3D programs becoming so much simpler uh, to use and so much more affordable, um, it's a great way to create your perspective grids and to block out shapes, which is kind of in a way this 3D is starting to take the place of the early block out of the drawing phases where you get to play with your proportions, uh, play with different camera lenses, um, different perspective, etc. And then just uh, render out or even take a screen grab of a quick block in and then you can paint over it in Photoshop or you can start to uh, just go and print it out and draw over the top of it with traditional media. And, and maybe I'll do that on some future uh, free tutorial Friday is take one of these images that uh, I've created out of this tutorial and draw over the top. Uh, it's a really a really fun quick way to work. And so you can see all I've done now is I switch to my top view. I'm arranging the you know these kind of building-esque forms that I've made. And you can see, imagine there's some sort of, you know, it's kind of my roads are kind of at a 90 deg or 45 degree, my grid is 45 compared to my normal grid of my ground plane. Um, but you could imagine streets or alleyways, all sorts of things in there. And I just changed my shading mode there so we could see everything instead of it being wireframe. So there's the arrangement of the uh, big blocks that I have so far. And that would be the thing that we could replicate across that ground plane. I'm not going to do much with the shading on this one at all. Um, just add a material over at the very top of my shader tree. And since there's no polygon tag on it, it's just shading everything below it. Um, so everything in the scene. And um, 
so it's it's overriding all those materials that came in with those parts so that's really all I'm doing for the materials just gonna be all sort of like primer gray and then I grabbed all my parts and I parented them into one of the other layers so all my buildings now are put into one layer group just by grabbing them and stacking them on top and now I've made a replicator and my prototype is going to be the group that group right there that layer okay and I'm said uh, include child items with it okay and so now back to my replicator so you can see I said include child items and I've picked the L3 uh, item which has all the other ones parented inside of it and now I'm playing with my replicator proportions so I just increased the Y value to 500 percent so I'm, under my replicator I turned off uh, you know constrain scale and um, change the Y to 500 and so that gave that took all those building blocks and just jacked them way up into the sky so now I have a whole bunch of skyscrapers and now I'm setting up my rendering and so let's go to the camera view okay now probably inside a building right because it starts in way low near the origin okay there's my cityscape and <clears throat> looking for my position where I want to get a nice view of this and I, I froze my uh, render update at the top that's why you're not seeing it update yet so just aligning my position I went to the global illumination I turned it on I enabled it um, I'm changing the frame width and height for my camera for my render window and there you go that is our cityscape so I think running time that's about let's see I did double time on this that's 14 minutes uh, start to finish inside moto to create that complex cityscape and now I'm experimenting with adding a little bit of fog so to get a little atmospheric perspective so as far as my shaders go I'm using a cell shader um, over the top of my base gray or I think it's actually just basic white material I didn't really change it at all and um, here I'm playing with the fog and now I'm also let's see that is replicator and I just changed the render density to what looks like 35 percent or 15 sorry 15 percent and what that means is it's only going to render 15 percent of my buildings and it's also going I can change the seed number which we'll do in a minute and that will change the arrangement of those blocks of buildings and now this is the really fun part so we're now at like eight so 16 minutes in and we're starting to get into that cityscape and move move around in it and this is a uh, 701 so the preview the preview update now is super fast which is great and um, you can just go into that scene and start picking and choosing your camera views see what works for whatever need you have um, and just because I'm doing this with the cityscape means you, you know you can do it with anything um, organics whatever you like it's just a great way to block out um, scenes especially uh, and especially super detailed complex you know environments like in this case which would take you a really long time to draw from scratch um, and you could photo collage etc but you know you can still layer your photography back on top of this um, I like it because it has a little bit more freedom I think um, to go in with your replicator and change the seed number to rearrange your building blocks change your proportions which we'll do a bit of um, and also I'm going to change now the environment to give a sort of different color and mood all right so you can see in my environment I've just uh, went and double clicked on a uh, desert preset okay and I'm going to change that so I did replace still under images and I have a stormy sky that I painted over probably one of those HDRs that comes with moto so this is a hand painted one and I've just swapped it so the mapping is the same and I'm going to go to my fog layer and I'm playing around with the fog do I want to you know I'm now I'm using the environment color okay which is basically my HDR so because my HDR doesn't have a line for the horizon unlike the desert HDR I have a big soft you know a bunch of fuzzy clouds etc um, 
that's why it looks like the clouds are mixing with the buildings in the distance. So I'm using that my background HDR as my fog. Okay, now I'm showing my camera so that I can start to position it in a different way. And I've gone to its display setting and I'm going to increase the size and now I can see it over there at the far left corner in my perspective window. So just changing the size of it. Uh, I also changed the size of my light because I'm going to play around now with a little bit of volumetric lighting. So now I've changed it over to physical sun and I'm changing the time of day. Uh, increasing the haze which is going to shift the color of the light to being warmer. So I have low lighting, warm light, um, like there's a break in the clouds behind us. Um, obviously it's cloudy off into the distance or just super super smoggy. And there we go, that's one of the renders. And now I'm back into the scene. And really, we're almost at the end of this one. Uh, super fast one. Um, anyway, I hope, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to show a couple of stills here in a few minutes. We've got about another five minutes to go. And um, what I really think it's fun about doing these, uh, these big blockouts is the fact you get to sort of now pretend you're a photographer. And so now you can see I, I see my camera, and I've just hit W to move my camera. And I'm moving it on the ground plane by picking the circle, right, so I can move left and right simultaneously or in the X and Z planes. And um, so it, this gives me a little bit finer control. I can see where the buildings are for my replicators. And then I can get the update in the preview window. Because if you want to be like, uh, what am I, uh, two meters off the ground here, um, like I'm standing in this environment, basically, so sort of walking through it, it's really hard to change that without popping through the ground plane in the top window when you're just moving the camera. Uh, that way. So this is a nice way to sort of set your height off the ground, set your angle like you're looking up at the buildings a bit. You can see it's a fairly, it's a very wide angle lens, 16 millimeters, so it's sort of, you know, very wide angle. And we're getting at that as a result, we're getting a lot of convergence uh, up into the sky above the horizon. Of course you get also it diverging below the horizon because it's kind of that, that wacky uh, video game perspective or digital perspective because there's no lens distortion happening yet. Um, I'll show a couple stills with lens distortion at the end. But that's kind of fun. Now you could set up a scene and then you could, uh, like I said, do a render and then paint over the top in Photoshop, which is a great way to work. Or you could print it and then draw over the top. Um, and that's also a nice way to work. Uh, I'll probably at some point later in the summer do a couple of those um, using some of these cityscapes. So there, there's the render. And there you can see my overhead shot. I can't remember exactly how large that that big square is that all the buildings are standing on, but I think it's something like four. It's definitely in the kilometers um, range, but it's not over five kilometers, I think. Um, so now I'm in, you know investigating different uh, compositions and just really like walking through this environment. So there's a nice little hole up there in those buildings. Let's see if I can get my camera positioned up in that hole there. And I'm also now playing around with the seed number. And by changing the seed number on the replicator, all the buildings move into a different arrangement. And this is a really fun way to sort of look for happy accident compositions. But that's not such a happy accident, right? You end up inside a building. Um, but that's a great way to just play around with render density, play around with um, seed number change the positioning and scale uh, with the random scale entry points or random twist is fun. You can see my I had set it to 45 so my blocks had already twisted random to each other. And I keep seeing that little interesting hole up there which might make a fun composition so I'm going to see if I can sort of bring my camera closer to that. So that's already interesting and then back up. And so you're looking for um, you know, interesting shadow graphics, interesting lighting. So there's a lot of variables. But if you stay focused and you think, well, I'm just trying to block out an interesting underlay, right? Um, this can be an incredibly fast sketching tool. And that's really how I'm using it today, is uh, using the 3D as a sketching tool. I'm not going in there and, um, you know, 
texture painting. I'm not doing final buildings. You know, that's all going to happen later. This is just give me interesting compositions. Let me explore a space. Let me play with different lens lengths. Let me move around. I'm not really even experimenting with lighting so much. Um, but there's that interesting shot I was trying to get to. So I'm sort of sneaking up on that, that creating a window through between these bigger buildings. Um, haven't yet played with scale because I haven't introduced a human figure yet. We don't really have any scaling devices. No stairs, no railings, no people, no familiar vehicles, those sorts of things. So that's really about it. Um, here are a couple of stills that I just did quick renderings of. You see I have the cell shader on, so I have some line work around, which actually is very helpful when you want to use this as an underlay. And um, so those are the kinds of shots you can generate in a really quick, you know, sit down with Moto using replicators and blocking out some, there's a nice top view, right, looking down on the city. And of course you go in there and randomize. Here's a little curvilinear, so a little lens distortion has been added. And now I just, I pulled that ground plane up and made a hill. So um, that could be cool. And I also added water. So now we have some reflections of water. And that is about it. Thank you.